Can you just say and spell your name? Barger, B-A-R-G-E-R. Sonny, S-O-N-N-Y. You just stay close. I'm not. Oh, don't get in the light, though. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's good there. Mm -hmm. You've just written a book called The Life and Times of Sonny Barger on the Los Angeles Motorcycle Club. Can you tell me briefly what this Sonny Barger story is? Well, I'm amazed that anybody's interested in it. It's just the story of my life the last 40 years in the club. It's about riding motorcycles, going to jail, being with my friends, traveling around the country on a motorcycle. Okay. Um, can you tell me who becomes a member of a motorcycle club? What, what's the kind of person that the lifestyle is? Well, it's just a guy that likes to ride a motorcycle and sort of you know, have a free will and uh, kind of lifestyle. Now, there's a lot of people who ride motorcycles that don't join clubs. Okay. Um, and what about the Hells Angels? They started out in the 50s. started telling all the local police agencies that if they had a gang problem, they could get federal money, and then everybody became a gang. We're a motorcycle club. We're a bona fide, legitimate corporation organized in the state of California, and our emblem and our name is federally patented and registered with the United States government. And the, the police agencies like to call us a gang because when they have gang problems, they get federal money. We are a motorcycle club. Okay. So, um, as things, when, when were the Hells Angels incorporated? Is that recent? No, the, uh, I believe we got our first patent in the late 60s. Okay. So there's a registered trademark, there's a website. Do you think motorcycle clubs have gone mainstream? I don't think we were ever really out of the mainstream. I think what it was was people were surprised to find out, other than riding motorcycles, we're basically human beings just like they are. Why do you think people had that perception of, of motorcycle gangs as not? Again, I really take offense to the motorcycle gangs. We're not a gang, and I'm not going to ever admit to being a gang. You know, like, if you want to talk about gangs, talk about LAPD, when they put up a bulletin board, say, join the L LA Police Department and become part of the biggest gang in the world. You know, we're not a gang, we're a motorcycle club. Okay. Um, I guess it's sort of terminology then. Do you think that the Because the impressions they get are all from the newspapers, and the newspapers are usually supplied their information from law enforcement. And law enforcement needs a gang status to get extra money from the government. Uh, that, that one had a lot of uh, noise over it. It was an airplane or something. Okay. It's better now. Why do you think people view those who ride motorcycles are in clubs with other people who ride motorcycles as outlaws, as sort of other in society? Well, I think uh, it, uh, most of the things people read about motorcyclists come from the newspapers and the TV that get their information from the local and uh, federal government agencies, and that's the way they uh, put out their information. Um, we have, we have the, we heard the baby at the end of the last word. Okay. Okay, just seeing that. All right. Fine. We're just going to keep going. Um, do you know um, if enrollment in the Hells Angels and or other clubs sort of nationally or even worldwide is, is rising or is falling or if there's been changes in membership? I mean, it seems like, and I don't know what this is based on, that maybe motorcycle clubs are 
perhaps with the websites, with the trademarks, that they're becoming more well-known? Oh, I'm not sure that it had anything to do with the websites, but motorcycling is, especially people riding Harley Davidsons, is becoming way more popular. The rich urban bikers, or the rubs as they're called, and the yuppies have raised the price of Harley Davidsons to where Los Angeles can't even hardly afford one. You know, uh, the first motorcycle I ever bought brand new was in 1960, and it was less than a thousand dollars. And I won't tell you what I paid for my new one the other day, but in Scottsdale, Arizona, they wanted twenty-seven thousand nine hundred dollars for it, which I didn't buy. Why do you think you're Why do you think riding motorcycles or just more biking in general is becoming more popular? Well, it's a lot of fun. What's fun about it? Well, the feeling of riding a motorcycle, it's its not anything you can explain. If you haven't done it, there's no way I can explain to you what it feels like. It's just a feeling. And it's probably different for everybody. Hold on a second. Yeah. So you're another one of them government people. You know, with all that gang stuff, that's all you've ever heard. That's all I've, yeah, sort of read about, definitely. Terrible. Um, but I think you're doing this is going to be a way to change the question. Well, it all depends on, you know, like how, how much of it gets shown. Absolutely. You know, like, yeah, when you say gang and I don't say nothing, then I, it don't get across. Understood. Can you tell me about rivalries between the Hells Angels and other groups? As far as I know, at the present time in the world, there is no rivalry between the Hells Angels and any other group. Okay. Um, what But in, I mean, and like you said, this comes from newspaper articles I've read, other broadcasts I've seen, in the past I've read about, you know. Um, well, there has been rivalries in the past. I think everybody finally sat down and figured out who the real enemy was. And uh, now we know, and all the motorcycle riders are friendly with each other. So when you sat down, or when groups sat down together, what, I mean, what, how did that, how did you decide who this is coming? I, mean, I didn't, I wasn't part of it. I'm not an officer in the organization any oh. longer. Did you start the original I, mean, I, I was one of the people that started the Oakland mm -hmm. Charter. And we started that in 1957. The club actually started in 1948. And this was originally a bunch of... Yep. Okay, can you tell me again when and who started the Oakland Charter? Okay, I was one of the people that started the Oakland Club in 1957. The club actually started in San Bernardino in uh, 1948. Now you're the Arizona chapter? Yes, I'm in the Cave Creek, Arizona charter. Cave Creek, Arizona charter. And what, as a group, what kinds of things do you do? We ride motorcycles. Right, but to where, from where, for? Anywhere in the world. I uh, got on my bike last week, rode to California, attended a NCOM meeting there, got on a plane, flew here, flying out of here today, get on my bike in California, ride back to Arizona. Open my new shop there Saturday, get on my bike and ride to Chicago, and then start back down Route 66, back to California, and then back into Arizona. And then I'll uh, ride up into Montana. From Montana, I'll go over to Sturgis. I'll catch a plane in Sturgis and fly to England. I'll fly back from England to Sturgis, meet my wife in Sturgis, and we'll ride back together to Arizona. And uh, maybe take a break for a minute. That'll be in uh, late August. And when you ride, are there, are you riding with two, three, 10, 20? It all depends on where you're going and what you're doing. On this, there'll be a minimum of a few people to a maximum of, I don't know how many. Right. We're not hearing your questions. So, in other words, I gotta if, act you like that. if you incorporate your question into your answer, that would help her. Um, 
I know this is sort of a sensitive topic, but just I just then we probably ought to not ask it. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's it's just along the lines of, of everything we've sort of been talking about that, like you said, federal law enforcement and then local and state law enforcement has taken on the attitude that. Well, I don't mind you asking the question if I answer it, but what I don't like is when you ask the question and I give an answer and then you take part of it out and it sounds something like I might be agreeing with it. So I have no control over how you're going to edit this. Well, I'll ask you an answer just so you get careful about what's So federal and state and local law enforcement has taken on the position that motorcycle clubs, Hells Angels in particular, but other clubs as well, are outlaws. Um, but, you know, for various, I guess, violence charges or drug charges, um, violence between groups, would you say that... Go ahead, you keep going on the drugs. Would you say that, that technically motorcycle clubs are not outlaws? Would you say that they're... Um, even though the federal law has, has sort of taken on this attitude, would you say that the groups are outlaws by sort of attitude? What I'm getting at is the, the notion of 1% that I've seen, this sort of one percenter um, term that I've seen referred to but never really explained. I guess could you explain that term? Yeah. Um, the term one percenter came about uh, when the American Motorcycle Association said that <laughs> 1% of the motorcycle riders are a bad group. They're the 1% that runs everything for the rest of the riders. Uh, at the time, that was in the 60s, we took the position that there was probably 99% of the motorcycle riders in the United States did not belong to the AMA. So everybody that didn't took to wearing a 1%er patch, and that's where the 1%er originated from. So the Health Angels has no affiliation with the American Motorcycle Association? No. And uh, the older ones of us that were around in the 50s and 60s, when the AMA decided that if you had anything to do with death or dying in your name, you couldn't belong to the AMA. We banned our members from belonging to the AMA. Over the years, that has sort of changed, and there might even be a few members that belong to the AMA before they got in the club and still do. Myself, I don't belong to it. I have nothing to do with it. Uh, we have our own motorcycle rights organization called the MMA. And what is the MMA? A modified Motorcycle Association, and uh, we lobby for motorcycle rights also. Daytona, so I can't answer that question. Oh, okay, that's just Daytona. That, yeah. in Kansas, that's where Bike Week is, is Daytona. Don't they have one in Kansas? Still? Not that I know of. Oh, okay. So you don't know about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Thank you. 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 I mean, you said it's about your time riding, your time... Well, it's about my life, not just my time riding. It's... That's okay. The book is about my life from my birth till today, 61 and a half years. It's like being born, growing up in Oakland, getting a motorcycle, uh, going in the Army, uh, you know, getting out of the Army, riding a motorcycle, going to prison, getting out of prison, riding a motorcycle. Uh, you know, it's just... Uh, How old were you when you got your first motorcycle? I got my first real motorcycle when I was 18 years old, right after I got out of the Army. How long were you in the Army? A year, a little over a year. I went in underage and I got a uh, honorable discharge underage. Okay. 
And what were you? What did you spend time in jail for? I spent one time in jail for uh, possession of drugs. And uh, when I got that conviction, I got a 15 to life. So I pled guilty to a couple of possession of gun charges uh, as a felon, you know, from a marijuana prior. And uh, then I uh, think I had an income tax evasion at the same time I pled guilty. What I did was I pled guilty to everything, cleaned the books, they run it all concurrent. Uh, I got the marijuana prior conviction overturned and uh, they let me out. Then I rode motorcycle again uh, and then I ended up uh, going to jail on a federal conspiracy where the government set us up. And uh, they arrested 27 of us. The jury let 25 go. Convicted me and one other guy. Uh, I was convicted for. Uh, messing up a bed in a motel room so it looked like somebody had stayed there overnight. Did five years for that. Wow. So how much time total? In my life? Yeah. Uh, 13, 14 years. In California? No, actually, uh, I did six years in Folsom. I did uh, 14 months in San Francisco waiting trial on a RICO charge, which I was found not guilty on. Uh, I did five years in Phoenix. That's why I moved there. I liked the weather. That was on a federal charge. Wow, so you're living in Phoenix because you spent time there in prison. But you left Phoenix. Well, after you, nobody likes 120 degree weather. But after you live there for three or four years, you do. Right. Is that about where? A little bit further? <laughs> <laughs>